What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we're providing you a state of the market in stock picks for January 18th, 2023. So if that sounds like something you could be interested in, consider subscribing as we do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. Now, as you can see, uh, Golden Sachs had a pretty rough day today as they missed by a lot. <laughs> Uh, most banks haven't been doing very well. Morgan Stanley actually reported this morning as well. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we are not off to a good start, uh, to say the least. Now, um, again, the market is technical wise is not breaking over the 4K. Something I talked about, you do have really strong resistance of 20 EMA monthly in the uh, 20 EMA weekly. And something I've always talked about, if you break back down below it, you're going to come back and retest it. Uh, now, we've played this battle for quite a while uh, between this line, and we struggle just around this area, even bumping up to 4,100. Uh, the problem is we don't really have a lot of news. So we are waiting on news, and we'll get some of that uh, moving forward. Uh, but uh, tomorrow we have the PPI in the morning as well. Uh, that's at... Um, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time in the morning. So you're going to get that. Um, again, you'll get some sort of short-term move. Is it going to be enough to break this back down is a question because uh, we are barely over that 200 EMA daily. We are pinched in between uh, these two spots. And so today the index hardly moved. Uh, tech came alive. Banks sold off. BA started selling off. Uh, which is an issue and something I've brought up before. Uh, we don't want uh, the bank's value to sell, but they are very, very overextended uh, in looking at everything. But um, uh, the bank, the uh, ECB today, they came out and said they're getting ready to raise rates on the next um in the next meeting at to 50 per, 50 points and they were expecting a 50 or 25 point basis move so we have uh typically followed them pretty closely as far as uh the aggressiveness and so i would be surprised if we came in at another 50 point basis move uh so that is something to keep in mind moving forward that news came out and it kind of had like a late hit the market wanted to actually try to run and break out today uh that was very short-lived um and this is what's concerning is um, is that I don't expect us. Uh, I was hoping we can get a little bit more of a move than we did. If you were a bull uh, to try to break out again, I don't like being, hey, Mr. Bear all the time. But uh, right now I need a catalyst. I need you, you need to show me that something is not breaking. Well, everything I see is showing that things that really matter are breaking and breaking bad. Uh, and so that is, is my concern. And I think we still have a big move before this thing recovers. And so being said, uh, again, we are currently sitting at a 4.5 uh, interest interest rate right now. And if they are talking about going to uh, over a five, right, you can uh, break that however you want. Maybe it's just one 50 point basis move and then maybe another 25. Maybe it's just two 25s. Whatever the case is, you got Fed members talking about they want it over some Fed members talking about they want it over five uh, and understand what that does. Yes, inflation is, um, is still high in general, even the core, right? Even the inflation I'm not really concerned about is still very high. Uh, sitting at six, even if you're going off the headline inflation, things are still expensive. Uh, people can't keep up. That's the problem. And it's taking a long time just for it to come down to a 6.5. Uh, just imagine how many more months it's going to take for it to come down to what they want. And they're projecting it to be back down to normal, not till July of next year at 2%. So that is uh, concerning nonetheless, because that means that high interest rates will be around until next year. Uh, so whenever they do lay off, you'll get a short-term rally. Hey, pivot, you know, the, the Fed aren't ra increasing rates anymore. But now you you are just boiling the water in that pressure cooker and um, until it explodes. And that's what, it, what it's, and that's what we're looking for. And that's why I talk about why we're going to see a lot of bankruptcies this year. It's going to be the year of bankruptcies. Uh, when is that going to happen? Who knows? But... One thing I can say is I've even been watching, you know, outside of uh, 
outside of the stock market and everything, I, I watched the housing uh, industry very closely, uh, particularly because there's land I would like to buy. And so I am watching prices and things have been on the market. Uh, a lot of the popular destinations, things have been on the market for 30 plus days and are taking, uh, you know, 30, 40 K off right now. Um, and so, and I think that's just the beginning of that rolling off, right? Housing is, it takes much longer. And so you're starting to get a surplus of housing, uh, on the market. The problem is, is, uh, with these rates staying at a high, um, essentially high, right? If we decide to stay around 5%, maybe that's, um, 525. I don't know. I don't know where we're going to land, but let's just say five, for instance, if we stay at five for another year, it's, it's going to be an issue. And then people try to liquidate. They can't liquidate what they need, right? They're their biggest over 60% of people's, uh, one of their, uh, biggest assets, the biggest wealth accumulators is essentially their house and the equity in their home. Uh, if they can't liquidate that and that's all they have left, this is where we talk about where you're going to get foreclosures and um, bankruptcies uh, around the board. And understand Microsoft was talking today about having more layoffs. At first, there was originally a rumor. Uh, there was a lot of like some ridiculous, absurd amount of layoffs around the globe. And then there was just, uh, I think it was more refined to there being uh, a lot of layoffs this week for engineers uh, in general. So we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that and see where that goes. Uh, again, layoffs have caused short term pumps in the stock a lot of stocks um, but understand that that's you're killing growth when that happens and that that's gonna uh, turn this into negative gdp uh if we continue to lay off and understand that that's where we're headed unless the fed changed their mind unless powell changes his mind and stops increasing rates it's not going to happen and not just stops increasing but starts uh, uh, decreasing rates uh, which he's not he's going to keep a stranglehold on the market because he needs to keep uh control over inflation uh, with what he had with what tool he has and so he will do that so that being said um the ecb move was not great this morning that wasn't good news uh again housing food uh still very expensive everything else in general is still very expensive it's coming down uh but not fast enough right the inflation has to come down to normal levels for the fed to consider start taking rates off and then um, when they start reducing rates, right, how much of a, where, where is the consumer going to be at then? Yeah, that's, that's the problem. So this is going to lead uh, well into next year, right? This, this is not a fast thing. Again, I've talked about the, the market can separate that, but the market, uh, the market that, that we talk about each and every day, it needs that catalyst. It needs that break, that headline news that sinks the market. And that's what I am waiting for, uh, for me to take good positions in the stock market uh now that will be delayed in the housing sector but nonetheless um, um we'll have to see or maybe it is housing that sends down the market and um we're gonna have to just see and see how it unfolds but i'm waiting for that black swan event uh in my opinion not saying again we can't have short-term rallies we can uh, but again we have to wait i think we need uh, one more uh, catalyst to send us down Again, this stuff is not priced in. Uh, you can't go off the stuff being priced in when it's headline news. You got algorithms that work and sell shares, right? That's just the way it does. It buys and sells shares off of uh, headline news. And so uh, we have to be careful moving forward nonetheless. Uh, but uh, again, we get the, as far as the schedule again this week, we do have PPI tomorrow uh, in, in the, meeting notes fomc meeting notes tomorrow as well at 2 p.m eastern standard time uh those are going to be important again people are weighing heavily on a, a 25 point basis move if there's anything in that report tomorrow that suggests that they're staying with a 50 point basis move i think the market's going to sell off that uh I'm not saying it will uh this is my projection uh the market is going to do whatever it wants this is why i said let the market digest it first and then uh, take position react as opposed to uh, trying to predict. And so um, we're going to have to see, right? And I think that's important is, is to react as opposed to 
uh, trying to predict. Uh, even though I do believe you should have a thesis, right? It does something I say you should have a general thesis on where things uh, could be going, based off of you know whatever uh, data sets you are looking at, uh, and then realize that markets go up and markets go down. And so you're going to get short-term pumps and short-term dumps and in, in feeding into your general thesis. So you have to know that in general. So that's the kind of way I am the approach I have is I know things are still really bad until I get that massive dive down. Uh, I'll be defensive and I'll play to the short side uh, majority of the time until I get that move. And then I'll, I'll look to go long again and then play offensive at, at that point. So so uh, we will see. So we have that, and then we have uh, Netflix earnings. We have a lot of earnings going on in general, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But um, I'm really looking at Netflix, the big tech earnings on Thursday. That's going to be important after the bell. Uh, that's going to give our first taste uh, before going into next week where we get more. I believe Tesla is next week, so uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, for the remainder of the week. So going back to technical-wise, I think it's um, important and something to look at the monthly here is you have, uh, again, this trend line, and we've been battling this trend line for a while, uh, and we keep getting rejected. We broke back down. This is the retest. I'm really expecting this thing just to roll over and start selling again. Um, again, I don't think we have enough positive news to break out of this. Uh, yes, people are fed up, but is it enough to break back up over this? Uh, my question is no, because I think you're still going to get more bad news. Uh, that things are getting worse. I think at this point, people think that they can't get worse, but in my mind, they will and they can. And so um, at that point, when the market realizes that, I think the market will continue selling off at that point. Uh, so we're going to have to see. But again, that battle for uh, 4K is going to continue into tomorrow. Maybe the PPI uh, pushes us in one way or another. Uh, hopefully the notes uh, tomorrow can definitely direct us. Again, if it's a 25-point basis move, that might provide hopium, and maybe we pump up to 41. Uh, but something I've always said, even on breakouts of these uh, downward channels that we've had all last year, we've essentially wicked back down. You're looking at the monthly. Look at this monthly candle. It pushed all the way back up to the 4340 mark. And then, uh, you know, before that monthly candle was over, it came all the way back down. It wicked all the way back down. It's something to keep in mind. And so these are looking at these higher time frames, but um, that's what you're seeing there. So you got a lot of resistance here. Uh, I think this thing can blow back through. Uh, you got a really strong support here at the 3,900. Uh, so maybe we play this range again, 3,900 to 4K, and start playing this range. Something I've talked about, we've been playing kind of 100-point ranges. Um, maybe we play this range until we get uh, policy, right? That, that would make sense, in my opinion. Uh, that we would sit here and bang around for the next two weeks. Um, I drop down to here uh, by end of week and then um, turn around, maybe pump next week for whatever reason. And then we'll get monetary policy. 25, we break out maybe to 41, not 25, 50 points. Maybe we will revisit there, 3,900, um, maybe even lower. I don't know. It's, it's hard to see how the market's going to react again the market is absorbed a lot of bad news so at this point it's kind of hard to really do much of anything uh so uh bitcoin looking at bitcoin uh, again awesome massive explosion again it, need to, it needs to break out right you have this zone right here it needs to break right it needs to get out of uh essentially the the 22k mark um to continue up now we did have a mini explosion here we'll have to see it took us forever we've been shopping in this area as well too so this is nothing new uh, again i think people are trying to time a pivot before it comes it's not saying we can't run and i'm not trying to suggest that you um fight it either uh if we do start if i can see more stuff that suggests that we we are in a better setup and we can uh not falter <laughs> The next couple of months, then I'll, I'll start taking more long positions. But uh, I have to see that first. Uh, I just is things just start not. My data sets are, are telling me otherwise. So the dollar, uh, very important. Uh, it started to push back up again today, and so if this thing holds the 102 and we start pressing back to 105, again could be an issue. Maybe it's a retest. Maybe it's a retest to the 104 before it starts selling off. 
but depending whatever way you want it to, if you're a bull or a bear, right? You like you want this thing to push back up. If you're a bear, you want it to sell off. If you're a bull, uh, so we're gonna have to see how that does play out there. Tesla, that's a massive rip today. Again, something I've talked about uh, the first time uh, it's really been in here. Uh, playing against this trend line, you have this huge gap. There could be a huge rejection off this tomorrow or later on this week and start selling off. Again, it's trying to get in some sort of earnings mode. Uh, it's definitely one of the strongest techs today. Uh, so we'll have to see how this ends, if this drops back down or not. But um, definitely want to keep an eye on Tesla and where it goes. Again, I think it's one of the best companies. And um, I myself, accumulated. I played a couple of these different pumps down here waiting for the breakout. If this can break and hold above roughly the 127, uh, maybe I have a little bit more faith in this thing uh, pushing back up. Uh, but again, still waiting on the catalyst. Um, have to see. It's hard because you can't go off technical, something I say all the time, ascending wedge. Uh, I can see that pretty easily here. Uh, for Apple, uh, is that going to play out or not? Ascending wedges are one of the few patterns that has actually played out over the past uh past year into this year um you do get some uh, major selling on this so you gotta definitely want to watch this keep an eye on that uh again strength has been in tech today we have, we have to make sure that continues uh ba had some selling today if it can't hold those 207 and if you start losing strength in ba in financials uh you're going to add a lot of sell pressure to the downside on the general index um but um Tesla and Apple are going to have to hold their own. And right now they're still really weak and we don't have Q4 numbers off of lockdowns that they've had or we're battling all Q4. Uh, we already know uh, deliveries weren't very good for Tesla. It's not saying that we can't pump uh, pre-earnings because that's what they do. In a normal cycle, they do pump before beforehand and then the actual earnings come out and then uh, the stock will move one way or the other uh, depending on the results of that. Uh, maybe it runs for a couple more days or maybe it sells off for a couple days. So and then after that point, it's really not playable. It normally chops until the next cycle. So that's typically how a cycle works. Uh, but with that being said, cool. uh, JPM, again, massive sell off, massive rip up. Uh, so this is uh, this is just crazy to watch. So we have to see if this thing can break uh, the 130, 143, 144, excuse me, uh, or not tomorrow. Um, but we shall see uh, Golden Sachs. Again, massive selling today. It's not a good sign. You want this thing to hold the 343. I think last minute this thing got upgraded towards back end of the day. Uh, so it started pumping back up a little bit, which is absurd. <laughs> Bank of America's kind of just been garbage since those comments from the CEO uh, moving forward. So, again, you don't want banks to give up. You don't want, especially Goldman Sachs was doing good last earnings. They did really well. I think they did one of the best out of all the banks' last earnings. And then now they missed by a lot. So, we're going to have to see how that does play out. But if you made it this far, I do appreciate you. Again, tomorrow's going to be a big day or can be a big day. Uh, depending on how uh, we land with expectations for PPI, I think we'll be a little bit um, going to get some intraday moves. You get a more of a pivotal move potentially off of the notes. Uh, and again, where people are trying to gauge if we're going a 25 or 50 point basis move, uh, I think are where people are trying to read out of those notes. Uh, so you're going to get some volatility around uh, both those times tomorrow. So just be mindful of that. Uh, but aside from that, uh, that's pretty much what I got. Again, you have to manage risk. Um, as long as you're sticking to your own thesis, your own plan, that's what matters. Uh, that's what I try to teach on this channel is try for you to develop your own strategy. Again, everybody's strategy is not for everybody. Even my strategy has come from multiple different people. So uh, I think you need to develop your strategy off of... Uh, what you've learned from multiple different uh, mentors or whoever that is, and then uh, go from there and create your own style and then find what works for you is what you have to do. So that being said, I appreciate you making this far. Go ahead and drop a thumbs up. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.